Hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is my Dead Space 2. Zealot difficulty. No upgrades. No damage. And no shop. We're on chapter 5. And we're moving into the cold storage. Where we get that crazy flashback coming up. Which... I always find this section to be quite interesting. Because it's... It's obviously a very fancy moment. It's trying to build tension. And then you get a bunch of fights against some enemies. And I believe... This might be the point of the, the, the run where I start using puka vomit instead of shooting them, which is long overdue, but pretty legit. So I've trimmed out as much of that as I possibly can as we push forward into this next sequence. And hopefully our, our capture wars won't persist, but they could. Who knows? I guess we'll find out together, see if it's ruined all my, uh, all my run and I have to re-record it. That would be depressing. But you'll hear a scream before anything is threatening, and it's just to build tension, these rooms. To build tension and make you lament the checkpoint if you mess up the next room. I think it's three rooms you move through before you get screamed at, and then you start fighting. And the fight is two slashers, one puker, maybe two pukers. There was the scream, by the way. So the next room is going to actually have something in it to kill. And I mu it must be said, right? Of all the games not to get attacked on horde mode, I think Dead Space is the one that would have been the best. Because can you imagine if you were able to play with your friend and like upgrade your weapons and upgrade your suit and stuff and customize it and everything and have a level and progression system tied to a, a horde mode with a bunch of maps and a load of crazy stipulations. I think Dead Space could have had a fantastic horde mode because the game is just really fun to play. And it's kind of sad that we got that ridiculous multiplayer that was hilariously broken. Because a horde mode would have just been king. And I wonder if there's any mods on PC where we could make that a reality. Because that would be so much fun. I'd love that. Because there's something about the combat in this game that is always satisfying. You know, and you bear in mind that there's not that many enemies in Dead Space. And there's not that many ways to kill enemies in Dead Space. There's a lot of guns, but they all fundamentally do very similar things. So, the the combat loop of this game and the, the feedback loop of the gameplay is all pretty simple, right? D dismember limb, sever limb, grab severed limb, sever limb, and that's it. But even after doing it hundreds of times, it's still incredibly satisfying and really fun. And if I could get a German copy of this game, I would play the shit out of it again. Because there's an achievement list for that that I could do, and... That'd be really, really fun to do, but getting German copies of things are a pain in the ass. There you go. Didn't use his puke. I'm still pretty disappointed that I'm not doing that. Oh, that was a scary one. There's my stasis. Oh, I should talk about stasis. That's pretty important, right? So the stasis. Base stasis gives you two shots when you don't upgrade it. It freezes the enemies for a decent amount of time. It's 100% fair and 100% strength. Uh, I think it's pretty damn strong, true... True to be told. I'm enjoying its use. I thought the stasis was going to be worthless and underwhelming. But it's amazing. It's really good even though you don't upgrade it. Uh, the, the rough side of it is it takes approximately 100 seconds for it to regen. So if you want both shots back, you're looking at 200 seconds. Which is a minute and a half, right? Um, 60 seconds and... Well, it's more than a minute and a half. It's a minute and 40 seconds. So... You're looking at three plus minutes for both regens, which takes a while. You can stand still and let it regen, though, if, if that's what you want. And it's going to be a strategy that you can implement at any time. I wanted to do that a couple times, but it turns out 100 seconds is a long time. And I'm really impatient. So there's two parts of the game where I did it. The first is in the school where you go onto the stage. Before I pressed that lever, I waited for one of my uh, stasis to come back. And then the other time was before the final boss, just in case, because I wanted to see if stasising would make much of a difference. And stasising can definitely help. And it's probably the key to doing that section. But uh, I never got a chance to test it because I took the contact beam and just killed the boss. So maybe when I go back and try and do it with the plasma cutter, maybe the stasis will be the difference that I need to, to do the seven marker breaks and, and get that recorded. But... I have almost no impulse to do it because it's really annoying. And it's such a shame too because this game has been an absolute joy to play. Every single section of this run has been wonderful. I've been having the time of my life. 
and then I got to the final boss, and I and I thought it was break the marker three times and win. I thought it was just gimmick. And then when I broke it the third time and I didn't win, that's when I knew I had that feeling. You know when you get that feeling? It's like I'm gonna be here forever. This is gonna suck. And then I broke the marker five times and she didn't die. And I'm like, yeah, don't know if I can do this. Don't know if I want to do this. Is is the main thing, right? Because anybody can grind at something long enough and get it done. It's one of those things. It's it's very doable. There's a guy on YouTube that's done it with the Ripper, and the Ripper unupgraded is is the weakest gun in the game. But it's kind of funny because the Ripper on that fight looks really good because you just use the the base function of it and you can spin on the spot and kill the kids as they're all around you. And you can even stun Nicole. So the Ripper seems like a way better gun for that fight than the, the Plasma Cutter does. Because the thing that you'll notice when you don't upgrade the Plasma Cutter is it's strong, it's versatile, you get 10 shots which is enough to do a lot of damage, but it fires really slow. And that's the problem. If it fired faster, I think you could probably 3 to 4 cycle the heart, but as it stands, it just doesn't fire quick enough. And there's no opportunity to fire shit at it either. Like if you could, if the kids had limbs that had spikes, you could use the spikes to, to shoot at them. Or if Nicole had slasher arms as she walked after you, you could steal her arms and she just keeps growing them back and you could hit the, the heart with those. because. When you fire items with, with Kinesis, it does a lot of damage. It does way more damage than your gun does. So maybe that would have made it much more viable. But I guess we'll never know, right? As we push forward and we're introduced to dropping out of the vent for the second time. And I think this is where the we come up against the... I believe they might be called Lurkers. The Lurkers, I think, are the, the baby-faced weird things that have tentacles. And there's a room coming up that's very similar to this that's got them. Is it this one? There's a lot of ammunition in this room. Once again, this is very dark, guys. I'm sorry about that. If it is the room I'm thinking of, they give you a spear. They... Yeah, here we go. So to my right, where I just walked past, you can get a javelin. And if you shoot it at this creature in the face, it will kill it instantly. And I should have totally done that. This is the only enemy in the game, aside from maybe the whiptail that doesn't give you an option to kill it with itself. I don't know if you can catch it's the things it fires at you. I've never tried, but I get the feeling that you can't. Um, I don't know why I get that feeling, but I kind of do. I could be wrong, I should probably test that. But, much like the, the Leapers, you can't use anything from them to kill them. Like, the Leaper, you can destroy his tail and then kill him with his tail, but in the time it takes you to do that, because it's awkward, you could have just dismembered both of his arms and he would have died. So, the only real use of the tail is after he's dead. And I think it'd be nice if you could just steal his tail instantly without having to shoot it. Like, steal his tail, stun him, and then fire it into his limb. I think that would have been a really fantastic weakness for that enemy to have. Or, additionally, can you imagine if you could use Kinesis to grab enemies? Like, for instance, the Leapers, when they're in mid-air, you could grab them. That'd be sweet. So you just wait for them to jump, you grab them, and then Isaac does, like, a slam into the ground with them. That'd be so cool. Once again, all of these things that they could have done in, in this series, and what did we get? Fucking microtransactions and time-specific resource robots. What a tragic story Dead Space is, right? Dead Space 1, one of the greatest atmospheres in video game history. Dead Space 2, the greatest example of an Aliens James Cameron-esque sequel to a horror, to a horror, not a word, to a horror game. And then Dead Space 3, literally, the, like, the Mummy 3, the Terminator 3, the insert the sequel you hated, the Jeepers Creepers 3 of the series. And it sucks too because mechanically, Dead Space 3 is pretty good, other than the enemies that get weird hyper armor, which I still remember to this day as being a pain in the dick. Other than that, I think the game has got stellar mechanics in a lot of ways. But they, they just killed it, didn't they? They killed it in so many ways. By the way guys, the aiming on that section, horrendous. And then we take on this big pack of Isaac Himmler fellas. And this is pretty sweet because... This is a scary encounter just because of how many spawns these creatures get. I kind of disagree with how capable this enemy is. 
that guy right there has bad depth perception. He should really go to spec savers because there's no reason he didn't hit me. But once you're up here, it's shooting fish in a barrel, this one. Piece of piss. Because you have a massive advantage. And what I should be doing is grabbing their bodies and hurling them back at them and saving ammunition. But once again, there's something really satisfying about shooting this enemy. And thus I'm going to be wasting ammunition. But... There's a checkpoint after this. And you're going to see a crossfade just there. Because I turned around, shot his explosive and it hit me. I was really angry too. Because I did that section quite convincingly. And then this douchebag turns up and kills me with his just AoE nonsense. That was the wrong button right there. Did not mean to do that if you're wondering. So I know there's a Necromorph spawning up here from this vent. So I'm going to throw this at him. And... I shouldn't have shot that. That was a mistake just then. If I'd have grabbed that explosive, I could have saved it for the two Necromorphs that are across the way from me, and I could have saved some ammunition, because I've just wasted so much on those children. So that was not the best choice. Uh, definitely a mistake on my part, because there's two enemies across. One is a Puker, and one is a Slasher. If I was smart here, I'd just use the Puker to kill the Slasher. But instead, I'm using the Slasher to kill the Puker. And here's the Puke. I'm just going to sprint away from it. Terrible. Uh oh, somebody spawned behind you, Chris. There you go. Standard Necromorph. D-Limb into Impalement. And there we go. I believe that's the end of the room. So all in all, other than being a little bit resource heavy, a little bit wasteful, it was a good run, right? It was pretty convincing. And then we open the next door, and there's a crippled Stalker. And then this dude's going to chase me all around this room because my inability to hit Stalkers with Kinesis is arguably my superhero power. But stamp the bodies, pick up all the resources. Just marvel at how good this game looks, all considered. Pretty interesting, isn't it? This game did so much at the time, I don't even think it was appreciated half as much as it should have been. And it was appreciated pretty damn good, because wasn't it getting like 9s out of 10s and things? But there's no HUD in this game. There's no HUD at all. 100% HUD is invisible, for all intents and purposes. Because they've organically we like weaved it into the game and I love that. I love the holographic nature of everything. I love the fact that I take one glance at Isaac and I know exactly where I stand on the threshold of my HP and my stasis. I love that when I'm shooting at an enemy I can see my ammunition without having to look anywhere. Everything about this game is so wonderfully and immaculately designed in... It really was ahead of its time and I don't think enough games used what this game did. I, I just don't. That's not even mentioning that this was one of the, the first survival horror games of this nature that I played where you could move and shoot at the same time and it didn't detract from the game. So there you go. The reason I missed just then is because the, the objects have travel time and that enemy is very fast. So it was quite silly. Look how fast this guy is by the way, see that? He was up my ass just then when I turned around. And this is when I, I noticed that he has to stop to swing and he swings really slow. He swings almost as slow as Isaac when he moves backwards. And I notice he has to do it every time. So I stamp on him, and then he swings again. And I move forward, move out, swings again, stamp again. And boom, strategy is born. So if you ever have one of those enemies and you have the time to kill him, do not shoot him. Just bait his swing, step backwards, stomp, step backwards, stomp. Piece of piss. Very, very simple enemy. Once again, though, you don't get into situations where you're able to do that that often as much as it would be useful. And then there's this room that seems quite intimidating and then doesn't have anything in it because it's just crawled out of it. But it's really interestingly designed. The masks that they have are this, uh, you know on the architecture? Like the gargoyle points on the pillars? They're all part of the Unitology's iconography, right? There's a lot of those... There's me skipping the cutscene and trying to wait for the door to open. That's the thing I don't get about the vents, right? In this game, Dead Space masks loading with elevators and with doors that have to load. This guy's a dick. That missed as well. It missed because the Kinesis got stuck behind him. That's one of the worst parts about the physics that govern that ability. If your weapon gets stuck, it doesn't have the same efficacy and it's really frustrating. But we know that this game masks loading with doors spinning and with elevators. So what the hell's with the, the vents? Are the vents something that people thought were a good idea? Because coming back to the game seven years later, the only parts of it that have aged are a couple of the controls in Zero Gravity 
End events. That's like it. Everything else is stellar and fits just as well now as it did when it came out. But the vents don't make any sense. Maybe it's a different way of masking loading. Maybe somebody thought it looked cool or it was tense. Because the first vent you go in is quite tense. Every vent after that is kind of a joke. Like, you never fight in the vents. You're never in danger in the vents. It's kind of like, remember on Tony Hawk Underground, where you skated through those corridors that took forever because they were loading the next zone, but they wanted you to keep playing? It's kind of like that. Or in Assassin's Creed, where you walk around that weird ethereal plane of, of, of Ubisoft UI design. Baffling. But here is a boss that I wish we got to fight. I wish this was the final boss. I really do, because I think this thing looks amazing. It looks so cool, but you fight it in cutscenes. Like, I would love... Imagine if you fought two of these as a final boss while Nicole watched. That'd be fantastic, because it's a boss. Look at it, it looks so amazing. And the aiming on these sections is not good either, so you're going to notice my aiming is terrible. But you're in almost no danger on this section. I think you've also got unlimited ammunition, which is cool. I still think this enemy is fantastic to look at. What a great design. Can you believe you see more tripods in the game than this thing? God, I love this thing. It looks so messed up. Such an abomination. Oh, don't dilly-dally here either because you can be killed. It's happened to me before. Look, imagine if you got in the ship with Ellie at the end of the game and you fought a planet-sized necromorph as the final boss. Like the marker manifested a giant space creature. And you were in a crazy flying section like something out of Devil May Cry. Or Ninja Gaiden at the end. That'd be pretty cool, right? But instead, run away from infinitely spawning children while Nicole tries to touch you. It's like some kind of strange Chris Hansen special episode. Terrible. But I believe that's the end of the video, guys. So, another chapter down. Thank you for watching. You take care now.